How do you go with problems and puzzles? This is the second short video in a three-part series that unlocks some of the mysteries of problem solving. I'm Gillian Eady of The Healthy Memory Company and I'm here to help you challenge your brain to keep it sharp and firing right into older age. In the first video, you heard that the very first step in solving puzzles is your self-belief. Even if you haven't had a lot of success in the past, you have the power to change that. Telling yourself you can do these things is the key. And the best thing about positive self-talk is that every time you try something that's hard for you to do, you're forcing new brain connections to grow. That's a huge reward in itself. Solving puzzles is largely a matter of asking the right questions and giving yourself time and strategies to answer them. What do I have to do? What do I know? Is there a rule or formula I can use? I'll underline the facts I've been given. What can I cross out or eliminate straight away? When you've answered those questions, you're on your way. Brain tuners have been a great help with this series. And here's a helpful hint about working your way into a crossword, code cracker, or even a jigsaw. Start where it makes sense to you. That's great advice. Let's try those questions on a puzzle right now. What do we have to do? We have to come up with who owns the cat and the bird. We've been given some facts and hints. So where do we start? For puzzles like this, it's useful to use a table. And your self-talk might go like this. Hmm, I need to organise what I know. So I'll put the names of the people on the top row and the animals down the side. Now with the cat, we were told it didn't belong to Peter. And John didn't have a cat. So the only person left to have a cat must be Sarah. And so on. By a process of elimination on the table, we eventually know that Sarah owns the cat, Peter owns the dog, so the bird must belong to John. Tables are pretty useful. When you're working on a puzzle, there are more useful questions to ask if you can't see what to do straight away. You can puzzle about what will I do first, then what? I can try this or this. Does my answer make sense? Let's try another strategy, looking for a pattern. Here we've been given a number series, 2, 5, 11, 23, and we have to find the next one in the sequence. So here goes your self-talk again. There must be a pattern. Let's look at what happens between one number and the next. Here's what I know. There are two digits between 2 and 5, and there are 3 and 4. But that doesn't work between 5 and 11, because there's 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in that gap. I'll try adding the numbers 2 plus 3 equals 5. That might be it. Yes, that's more like it. I can put the additions out like this. And when I look carefully at them, there's my pattern because it goes 3, 6, 12. The numbers in between the gaps are doubling with each step. That means the final step must be 23 plus 24, which gives me 47. Phew, I made it. Once you get a puzzle out, while you're still feeling pleased with yourself, do a final check. Does the answer make sense? Yes. Did I use something that I should remember for next time? Hmm, yes, we used a table and looked for a pattern. Was there something I want to remember in case I need it again? These are all great questions and well done for taking the time today to learn how to solve puzzles. Look out for the third video coming to you soon and be one of the very first to find out details of how to get your own copy of the Healthy Memory Workout.